So you just got your brand new shiny Raspberry Pi, you've plugged in the Ethernet cable, the USB cables, you've outputted it to your TV, you've plugged in the USB cable, it's all powered on and nothing's happening. Well, basically that's because you need an SD card and you need to set up that SD card. So if you're just stuck in a blank SD card, it's not going to work. So what you need to do is find an SD card. I'm using a 32 gig model. AI, you can use anything between 32 gig and 4 gig. Um, <clears throat> and what we need to do is actually install the operating system. We do this by opening up our web browser and going to www.raspberrypi.org. Then click on the quick start guide. And then scroll down until you see um, a Raspberry Pi.org downloads. And scroll down until you see Win32 Disk Imager. Click on that. Then click on Win32 Disk Imagery Binary dot zip. And that will then start downloading. Now I've already downloaded it. So that will now sit in my download folder. And then we need to download the actual um, operating system. So we scroll down to Raspberry and Wheezy. You do have a number of other options as well. But if you're just first starting out, then I recommend the Raspberry and Wheezy. Um, just click on the direct, down, the direct option. And uh, it will then start downloading within uh, five seconds. If it doesn't, click on the direct link. And then it will start downloading. Again, I've already downloaded that, so I don't need to go there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is open up my Downloads folder and go to Downloads. And if I find a Win32 Disk Imager.binary, which is already extracted, but I'll find the zip file. Um, as you can see, if I right-click on that, then click on Extract All, it will then extract to that folder that I just showed you. Do the same thing um, with the Raspberry and image that you just downloaded, which is that folder there. So find the 2002.zip, uh, again, right-click, click on Extract All, select that path, click on Extract. And then what we need to do is insert your SD card into your SD card reader. If you don't have an SD card reader, go get one. Um, double click on <coughs> Win32 Disk Imager um, hyphen binary and then double click on Win32 Disk Imager.exe and if you get a little warning message just click on yes you get the Win32 Disk Imager there uh, make sure your drive shows up there as you can see it is G now make sure that your SD card is unlocked there is a little switch on the slide that slides back and forth make sure it's in the unlocked position otherwise it won't be able to write to the card and it may not even detect the drive um, click on this little symbol for the little blue folder here and open up your downloads folder go to the 2012 10 28 well, uh, wheezy raspberry or whichever file you downloaded select the um, <coughs> raspberry.image that is uh, a 2 gig file which is why you need at least a 4 gig card in order to run everything uh, so click on the save button there and then click on right uh, click on yes it may corrupt your device um, again this is um, a completely destructive process. This means if you put in your uh, your SD card from your camera, it's going to wipe all data off there. So don't do that. Um, <coughs> now you won't be able to get the images back, and it will basically overwrite everything on the card. So make sure this is a, a completely spare SD card um, that you can spare for this process. Now with the magic of video editing, I will pause the video there, and we'll come back when it reaches 100%. And here we are with just uh, a couple of percent to go. And once it's complete, you get this nice helpful message saying, yes, it is completed. So simply click on OK and you're basically done. This is your SD card set up. So what I'm going to do now is open up my SD card folder. So I'm just going to take it out, put it back in again, and that will open up my folder. So... Um, on my system it's mounted itself as drive D which you can see here so removable drive now as you can see it's only got um, <clears throat> a free space of 55 megabytes and you've got I've got a 32 gig card in here so don't worry about that I'm going to show you how to fix that with the main installation of Raspberry Pi but before we do that we're going to have a look at the Raspberry Pi drive folder um, so this is what happens when you uh, you insert your card you get a bunch of uh, different folders that can be read from Windows um, now what I'm going to do is open config.txt now if I open up with um, notepad I'll get everything sort of jumbled together and that's no good so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to run wordpad and <clears throat> I'm going to drag the file into the taskbar don't drag it into the document area because that just embeds it drag it into the toolbar instead and that opens up the file 
and you get a bunch of different settings here now um if you've got HDMI problems, that is, if you've plugged in your, HD, your your Raspberry Pi into your TV or your monitor, as I'm using, and it doesn't support the maximum resolution, and you get um, an out-of-resolution range error message, or you just get no display at all, then you need to tailor your Raspberry Pi's output to um, your display settings. So find your monitor manual, and uh, find out what it actually supports, and then you want to open up your web browser and go to eLinux dot org forward slash rpi config and this uh, gives you all the information you may ever need on your raspberry pi configuration file now the thing we're interested in here is uh, first of all if you have um, a composite out as i'm using here and your tv doesn't support ntsc or doesn't support well ntsc will be the default one if, it, if your tv doesn't support ntsc um, then what you want to do is uh, open up your config file go down to sd tv and set that to mode two as there and then uncomment it by removing the hash file sorry the hash symbol and then a click on the save button up there to save the configuration file now i don't need to do that um, because my tv supports output normal outputs again if you um have a, a japanese version of ntsc or a brazilian version of pal then you've got modes three and zero there to compensate and if you want to force NTSC, then you can set it to zero as well. Now, um, more slightly more complicated, you've got the HDMI resolution. So if you're outputting digitally, then these are the command. You can ignore the frame buffer. That's um, not very useful to us. What we want instead is HDMI group equals one, HDMI mode equals one. So we want to uncomment these and a group refers to this first um, set of definitions so HDMI defines screen resolution in CEA or DMT format and uh, this is basically for your TVs to be honest um, so find out what your TV supports if you're getting these error messages and you can manually su uh, support it that way so you've got everything from VGA all the way up to uh, the full uh, 1080p resolutions and the various frequencies that may be supported now if you're using a computer monitor like I I am um, then these re these modes are going to be far more useful and to um, change the Raspberry Pi so these modes are actually used what you want to do is make sure that uh, the group is set to number two and once you set it to two it then references all these specific resolutions here view your monitor manual for example my monitor will support mode 36 which is uh, 1280 by 1024 at 75 megahertz so all I want to do then is uh, change this to to 36 so remember group refers to the group of resolution supported and the um, the number refers to the mode here so mode there and then cl simply click on save and uh, it will then be saved now if you um need to increase the output of your hdmi signal then you can uncomment this and uh, make sure that um uh, you've got HDMI boost on and this will help with any problems you've got like that. If you want to overclock your processor, 700 megahertz is, is default, um, then you can basically remove the comment there and set it up to 1000 which is one gig don't go any higher than that um, I recommend you just leave it at default I, I have no intention of overclocking this device at all um, so basically once you've adjusted those primary settings there's a bunch of other things here that I haven't actually come across or found any need to use so uh, I've shown you the ones that um, that I've absolutely needed to use in the past so once you've adjusted the HDMI or SDTV settings and set up the um, the overclocking if you want to again I recommend that you don't um, then you click on the save button that will save the file and it's all ready to go and uh, once that's done I don't want to save this because uh, I don't need these settings and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop out my SD card from my SD card reader I'm going to pop it into the SD card slot on the bottom of my Pi and I'm going to bring up my um, VLC viewer which is uh, tied into a video capture device and I'm going to turn on my Pi so this is all coming live directly from the device itself, so we get some nice pretty colours, and we get a bunch of Linux startup text. So uh, I'm just going to wait for Linux to, uh, to boot itself, and then we will start the configuration screen. So 
So once we've got this configuration screen, I've just got to swap keyboards because I've got a few keyboards lying around here. Uh, that's the one I want. We use the arrow keys to navigate between the various selections. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is expand your root partition to fill the SD card. Um, what this basically means is... Uh, when you write the image it doesn't set how big your SD card is this is what does that um, so if I hit enter and go through all this text here uh, so boot partition has been resized the file system will be enlarged upon the next reboot so if I hit enter there um, now this won't actually take effect until I go to the finish option and uh, and actually reboot the device that way um, the other thing you may want to do is configure a keyboard if you've got a, an unusual keyboard layout then you can do that there just follow the options on the screen if you want to change the password of your raspberry pi the default password is raspberry and the login name is pi so the login name is always pi um, but if you want to change your password, stop anyone else using your device, then you can do so there. Um, if you want to overclock your device, then you can press enter and it will give you some warning information. You can set up the, um, um, the, the increase in speed and stuff there. So again, I recommend that you don't really do this. So I'm going to cancel that. And uh, then we've got, um, you can set up your locale, your time zone. Um, SSH is something I want to enable. Um, SSH is basically a, a process by which you can remotely access your Raspberry Pi command prompt um, from the network. So if I want to set up um, a web server or something like that on my Pi, then SSH will basically allow me to access my Pi over the network using PuTTY. And our boot up behavior, basically this, um, if you don't want to ever see the command prompt again, if you've already had enough of the command prompts to, to, to you know, forever, then um, you can hit this one, um, click on yes, or press enter on yes, and it will basically boot into the graphical interface rather than going to the command prompt. Now, I like the command prompt, so I'm going to keep the command prompt alive. Um, don't worry about updates, it's not really important. Once that's all done, um, we simply go to finish, and this will save our configuration settings. It will then ask you if you want to reboot, and you do because you want to resize the the uh, partition on the card. Um, so this will then send all the terms signals and uh, and start shutting down all the hardware properly. This will take a few moments, and it's unmounting the local file systems, and it will now restart. And that's restarting our device. And we'll go up through the usual boot sequence again, but this time um, we will start resizing our card. So it won't go directly into the configuration file or hit the command prompt straight away. You will have, I've got a 32 gig cards and it takes about 15 to 20 minutes um, to resize my petition to fill the entire card. Now as it's writing the uh, petition, um, the screen will go black a few times. Don't worry about this. This is simply power saving. Um, as soon as it's finished, it will then restore itself. Um, if you want to see the text again, simply press the space bar and everything will appear. Um, so if it goes black, don't worry. Don't switch off your device. Uh, and if it just sits here on this text for, an ex for a very long time, leave it alone. It's the best thing you can do. If you turn it off too soon, um, then your card size will not be uh, resized properly and your Raspberry Pi will be all messed up in all different ways so leave it running and um, if it's a case of the watch pot never boils and go make yourself a cup of tea put on a tv program uh, and come back in half an hour or so and it will be done so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to bring up my little clock here as you can see i've been recording for exactly 14 minutes now um, so subtract 14 minutes from however long this process takes and it will give you an idea of exactly how long it takes obviously through the power of video editing i'll speed up this um, this process sizing has been complete and it's now progressing through the rest of its boot up sequence and what we're going to do now is we're going to log in and remember the uh, username was pi and the password is raspberry
And there we go. So we're now at the Raspberry Pi command prompt. Um, now, standard Linux apply, uh, rules apply here. So just use Linux, co Linux commands to access everything, um, such as ls to uh, list the directory. Um, you can change directory with cd. So if I want to go back, cd dot dot, then ls again to um, list everything. And I can keep going back, ls. And you can basically go through the entire folder structure of Linux that way. Um, if you want to deal with the user interface or the graphical user interface, then simply type in start X. And this will take you into the desktop mode where you can start using your mouse and start interacting with all the pretty pictures and things. And I'm using the wrong mouse here. I've got the other mouse plugged in. There we go, so we've got our mouse moving around the screen and we've got the default applications for Raspberry Pi. So join me for my next tutorial and I'll show you how to progress from this point onwards.